What's up guys? Today we're going to finally get to my Mandalorian helmet. Applying for the 501st from Great Ape Studio. Uh, pretty much the hottest and most detailed Mandalorian helmet on the market to date. So you want to see how I do my settings, where I do my supports and blockers. Let's dive in. Alright, so first thing we do is pull up our Great Ape Studio files. Clearly. Like so. There's our helmet. Now, this is how it comes out um, as default from Great Ape Studio. But as you can see on this thing, um, I do really like uh, Great, or sorry, not Great Ape's, Galactic Armory's helmet as well except a few minor details mainly in the ear and the vent uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip this 90 degrees I'm gonna print it like this and the reason I do that is because this line here if it's on an angle like so to try and save a bit of filament you're gonna have jagged edges across the entire thing um, more, it's not horrible. I mean, you can sand it down, but I just like this. It just, you don't have to worry about trying to get out the jagged edges, but that also goes for inside here, inside here, inside the visor. They're all jagged edges. So we, we sacrifice a bit of time for a bit of material, but if you don't put too, too much support on your infill, you're going to be fine. Next what I do is my head is a little bit smaller I've already measured what you should do is basically like this don't go from the ears the outside ears because your, your your head isn't inside those attachments so go from here to here from ear to ear what I would do is put it sounds silly but two books on the side of my head and use a ruler length to length and the same from tip your nose to the back of your head and have somebody help you with a ruler and then add about five to seven millimeters for that diameter if you're gonna go length times width. Or you can just do the math and get the circumference diameter of your head and uh, calculate it that way too. Just an easier way if you want. Two books, a ruler, and then book to book. And then you have your pretty good measurements on your X, your Y, your y and then whatever your Z is, you can do it from your chin to the top of the head or just kind of go with whatever it scales it at from your, from your measurements. So I've already done mine and 98 fits me basically perfect. So how are my settings? I'm going to go with standard. I'm not going to go crazy with like a 1.2 because it's my helmet. I'm going to finish it anyways. I'm not overly concerned. So I'm going to go with 0.2 layer height and I am using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, pretty standard. I'm not doing anything dramatic. 1.2 for the wall thickness with a three wall line count. Um, I do have it at the back seam. Now, I am going to show you this one because that means it would go directly up the middle of here. What I have found is if I turn it three degrees, so we're gonna go over here, take off snap rotation, and I'm going to go one, two, oh, well, okay. Apparently two is three. That is gonna take our Z seam and go right inside this crevice that you'll never even see. One of my little tricks. Um, depending on your, your computer, it could be a little different. I'm not 100% sure, but um, that seems to work for me. Three degrees, a little to the right. Next. So we have our three degrees here, put on snap rotation again. It's not really important at this time, but I like to have it on because sometimes it messes me up if I forget or I'm doing something else. Okay, I'm at a 98%. Now, moving on. My personal helmet, I want a little bit stronger, so I'm gonna go 30. This is just personal preference. This isn't mandated for anything. 20% works perfectly fine. 30% because I just, it's just mine. I just wanna do it that way. So I'm going to do it that way. Cubic, I've just 
been researching myself like crazy and apparently cubic is one of the top three for strength grid is good but there is videos online maybe we'll get to that um, and they're getting more detailed as the infill pattern and cubic seems to work for me at a moderately decent speed but other than that it's durability and strength I'm extremely happy with so I use cubic for basically 99.9% .9 of everything my printing temperature is at 215 because I have a all metal hot end my build plate is at 55 it fluctuates depending on the part if it's more surrounded on the bottom I'll use 60 uh, I'm gonna print the print speed at 50 my retraction again the reason it's a little bit smaller is because it is a steel hot end um, the standard one that comes with your printer it's usually three to seven uh, the hotter end ones because they do run at a hotter temperature if you leave too much retraction you're gonna have a lot of stringing so that's how that is combing mode I have it on just not inside the skin because for my infill pattern I'm not worried avoid printed parts there is really isn't any Z hop I do not leave that on with a hot metal end I've tried a bunch of settings and it's just easier to have this not on it minimizes the stringing now on my other computer or sorry on my other printers I do have it enabled that don't have um, a hot uh, an all metal hot end now I am going to use the normal support structure on this the reason I'm going to use that is tree is um, a lot harder to clean up inside of here personal preference again use whatever you like this is just what I use I am going to use it everywhere so that it gets all inside of here I'm going to get it inside of here inside of here now these aren't really important but considering this is my personal helmet and I don't want any flaws or having to dremel these out I am going to use a little bit and sacrifice a little bit of filament for ease of mind and it will get inside of here so it will basically start inside of here and work its way on an angle and be all nice up in here so I'm going to use 10% infill I am NOT going to use a um, a brim you can use a brim some people do some people don't I personally am NOT going to use a brim because I just really don't need it um, my my I'm confident in my glass bed the adhesion I'm confident in my printer and everything but if you are a little bit worried by all means add a brim it's uh it's not the end of the world it is a little bit more comfort knowing that you have that little bit more uh, stability okay last but not least support blocker now you see this giant giant red ring of death right here we're not talking Xbox we are talking filament waste so what's going to happen here is if we let that go and we slice it, it's going to take up so, let's actually just, let's just do it. It's going to take up so much filament to build a giant block all the way up there. And I have made, I'm going to say over 50 helmets and I have never once used a support in the middle. Never once. All of my videos I've posted and the ones coming up I have never used it will never use it so let's let this thing slice which seems to be taking a little longer than usual probably because I'm recording um, and then we're gonna see the difference once I add the support blocker where I add it and uh, go from there But again, this is the Great Ape Studios, uh, not Studios, Great Ape Studio files. And he has basically made this off of the Anovo helmet. Like if, if you actually look at it, it's pretty bang on. This thing is used majority for all of the really high end um, costumes. Majority of the people applying for the 501st use Darren's um the creator of Great Ape Studio, uh, his files. And when I seen the detail, I actually fine tooth combed it. So I'm gonna vouch for him 110 fold. I literally had a picture up of the suit where you could zoom in from different angles on different parts like the, the shoulders, the helmet, the chest. 
and when I when I fine tooth combed it because I wanted the best I could possibly get nothing compared like there's files out there really good really close some of them are bang on but I'm talking every single piece of grade 8 studios um, armor set is flawless so I had to have it I already have another one from Galactic Armory which his files are great but grade 8 studios it, it's not comparable it's just so now I'm restarting my own with his because it's just that good okay so eight days seven hours and one and a half spools of filament guys that's madness so let me show you what happens when I cover this out because it really is not needed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to our support block I'm gonna click on our head here I've done this again like I said a million times I already know when I scale this to 2600 it's gonna be the perfect size that I need now zoom out a little bit here so you can see I'm going to move it up just to the point where this beak is covered because you don't need supports anywhere in here the little bit that we're gonna get there is fine the little bit that we're gonna get there is fine and you, as you can see this is completely covered nothing viable back here is covered because we need that and that's basically it guys let's slice it now so we were at one and a half spools and eight days let's see what we just got by completely cutting that out rename my file this is going to be um ape mando and then nick because that's mine So when I go downstairs to start printing it, throw it on the printer, this will be all scaled out. Like this thing is just gorgeous. I like how it kind of has the dip in, like you see in the, the files, and it doesn't seem squished together. The back of the helmet, some of the files, they seem really long on the Z axis, where this one, it just seems so, um, so clean. And I'll show you an example of what I mean later on with uh, in another video for some of his files compared to others especially ones you see on Thingiverse that are, are good I mean if you're not going for the 501st approval and you're just looking for something for home that you don't want to pay for by all means some of the Thingiverse files are amazing some of them are just pretty darn accurate and done upright they could probably pass for the 501st easily but with these files it's just ready just just sand and paint so here you go so four days seven hours we literally cut it in 50 percent we took the filament over 50 percent it was 1500 we're at 715 so under 50 percent we're at, that's like a 46 percent right there just by blocking that and you do not need this at all so that's how i do mine guys um i'm gonna save this bad boy right here and go downstairs and start printing it right now and that video will be up soon too Hopefully you guys like the settings. If this was something that you guys were more interested in, we'll get into a lot more detail for settings and certain things that I do down the road. Till then, keep printing.